Hey guys, welcome back to another video here to talk about or give my thoughts on EA Access, which is a service that I'm sure a lot of you probably don't have it. I, I know within my circle of friends or people here on YouTube, most people don't really care for uh, for EA games, uh, especially the sports games. But if you guys are into that sort of you know games, you know sports games and other EA. Uh, franchises. Uh, this is a very, very good service. I highly recommend it. Uh, it's basically uh, similar to PlayStation Plus in which you pay either a monthly fee or a yearly fee and then that gives you access to a selection of games that you can download for quote-unquote free. Obviously, obviously it's not free. It's part of your subs uh, subscri subscription fee. Um, but, um, you know, they have a pretty broad range of games and the uh, subscription fee is not very high. Um, I think it's $30 for a year, but uh, they, they have the uh, codes for sale uh, all the time. So, for example, late, uh, as of late, I renewed my membership for EA Access and uh, they had some codes on sale for like $21.99. So, uh, if you look around, you can save money and the uh, sales on the... Uh, on, on EA Access are pretty frequent, so for around twenty to twenty-five dollars, you can get a one-year subscription. Uh, obviously, the uh, the negatives are that you know the games are digital, obviously, and uh, once your subscription expires or once you stop paying, um, you no longer have access to those games, which is perfectly fine with me. I mean, for example, I've been playing a lot of uh, FIFA 17, as I mentioned on one of my previous videos. It's probably one of my most play, played games of this year, and that game alone, in my opinion, already paid for itself. Uh, that, that's one of the games that I, I've been playing through EA Access, uh, through this uh, downloadable uh, service, and that alone, to me, uh, already paid for itself. And uh, the cool thing, I know a lot of you guys are not into sports games, but the cool thing about EA Access is that it, uh, they have other genres as well. They have a pretty good uh, broad catalog of EA games such as, uh, you know, as far as first person shooters, for example, they have the Battlefield 3, uh, they have Battlefield 4, they have a Battlefront, you know, Star Wars Battlefront, the, uh, you know, the first one. Um, and they also have, uh, they, they've been adding, uh, I don't want to say retro games, but last generation games. For example, they have Battlefield Bad Company 2, which is a 360 game, but it's available as a download and through the backwards compatibility of the Xbox One, you're able to play Bad Company 2. So they're starting to add like 360 games, which is, in, in my opinion, really, really cool. Uh, and then, of course, if you guys are not into first person shooters, they have other games too. You know, they have, for example, uh, the uh, uh, latest uh, Mirror's Edge game, uh, Mirror, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Uh, they have games like Dragon Age. I, I believe Inquisition is the uh, latest one. Um, they have puzzle games like, you know, what is it called? Like Pebbles or Peggles or whatever. Uh, they have a couple of puzzle games. Uh, and of course, you know, the meat and potatoes are the uh, sports games. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, they also have racing games. They have like two or three needs for, uh, for speed games in there. They have the uh, the crew, which is that online co-op uh, game, and uh, depending on the success or failure in terms of sales of EA games, uh, they add uh, games sometimes pretty soon. For example, Mirror's Edge Catalyst was somewhat of a failure in terms of sales um, for for EA. Uh, so that particular game, I believe, was available on that service pretty quick, like just a couple of months after its release, it was already added to the uh, the vault, as they call it. Um, so, uh, in my opinion, it's a worthwhile service. I've been uh, playing uh, games, I've been just t testing the waters. Like, for example, I downloaded The Crew, I, I downloaded Mirror's Edge, the, the Dragon Age game, um, uh, the, the new Plants vs. Zombies uh, Modern uh, uh, Warfare 2, I believe, the second one. Um, so, I've been not necessarily putting a lot of time in those games, but just testing the waters. Uh, you know, just to see how the new Mirror's Edge game is. I put like an hour or two of gameplay in there. And uh, it, it's just a good way to test the waters and uh, uh, play games and see if you like them. And, you know, if you really want to have the physical version, I guess you can uh, buy it afterwards. But uh, for me, it's it's a really good service because I'm really... Uh, I like sport game, sports games, uh, especially the FIFA games. So for me, it's something that, uh, in my opinion, it's worthwhile. Um, uh, having and like I said, I've been playing a lot of FIFA 17, and they're somewhat 
yeah, you, you, you do have to wait um, a couple of months before the, the latest FIFA game is released. Uh, obviously, at this point, FIFA 18 is already around the corner, but FIFA 17, it's, uh, you know, it's new enough and they have uh, updates through uh, downloadable updates for the rosters and the teams and whatnot. Uh, so in, in that regard, it's, uh, it's pretty fun and in my opinion, a worthwhile service. Now, it is important to note that uh, EA Access is on, it's only available on the Xbox One and PC. Unfortunately, it's not available on the PlayStation 4. Um, uh, my guess is that Sony is the one, I believe EA came out and said, you know, we would love to have that service on the Sony uh, PlayStation 4, but it's something that Sony is not uh, letting uh, EA uh, do. And uh, I think the, the, the answer is pretty obvious. Uh, uh, I, I believe Sony wants to have that monopoly of having just PlayStation Plus as the uh, subscri subscription based service and they're not going to allow any other you know publishers out there to have their own to run their own little uh, gig uh, which is unfortunate because I, I, I really you know if, if it was up to me I would have gotten this on the PlayStation 4 just because it's my go-to system uh, for this generation it would have been nice to uh, you know to, to, to play all these games on the PlayStation 4 but Nevertheless, um, you know, I have an Xbox One and I've been enjoying a lot of EA Access. I had a, you know, I, I did a one year uh, membership and I liked it enough that I just uh, renew it. I'm gonna have it for a second year. And I'm pretty much looking forward to the, you know, a couple months from now, you know, have, playing the new FIFA game, you know, the FIFA 18 or whatever, um, playing the new Madden games or the NHL games again. Um, it's, it's, it's not something that you're gonna own once the your subscription fee runs out um, you know you don't have access to those games but that's enough uh, you know for me playing putting a couple of hours here and there uh, it's enough and worth the, the money so uh, that's it guys uh, highly recommend it uh, I know a lot of you don't play sports games or, or games like that but again they have a, a pretty uh, broad selection of other titles as well so it might be something uh, worth uh, checking out if you uh, don't mind playing digital games. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I will see you all later.